Radio Gold. Welcome to Radio Gold. I am Randall Emerson, and I will be your host as we continue the exploration of our vast and varied archives of classical radio programs for your entertainment. X-1 was an American half-hour science fiction radio drama series that was broadcast from 1955 to 1958 in various time slots on NBC. Known for high production values and adapting stories from the leading American authors of the era, X-1 has been described as one of the finest offerings of American radio drama and one of the best science fiction series in any medium of all time. Murray Leinster was a pen name of William Fitzgerald Jenkins, a prolific American writer of genre fiction, particularly science fiction. He wrote and published more than 1,500 short stories and articles, 14 movie scripts, and hundreds of radio scripts and television plays. In 1945, he wrote a very popular novelette that was equally well thought of when produced and aired by the National Broadcasting Corporation as a live radio play. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present First Contact. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, First Contact, by Murray Limester. They had been in space six months now, moving with the incredibly faster-than-light speed of the overdrive. In six months, they had gone from Earth outward and outward to the crab-like nebula with the twin stars a routine flight of exploration and scientific research. Solid object about 90,000 miles away, sir. Located, Dort, exactly. Identify it. A small object, sir. Captain, I've never seen anything like this before. Whatever it is out there is coming toward us at an incredible speed and retreating to zero just as rapidly. What's the mass of the object, Dort? Well, it varies with the distance from us, sir. Step up the scanners. Well, nothing, sir. Absolutely nothing shows out there. And yet there must be something. Those alarms are foolproof. Action stations, man all weapons. Condition of extreme alert in all departments immediately. Captain, what is it? Dort, I ran into the same thing once before on the Earth-Mars run. We were being located by another ship, and their locator beam was the same frequency as ours. Every time it hit, it registered as something solid and monstrous. But, Captain, we're the only Earth ship in 18 light years around. How? I didn't say it was another Earth ship out there, Dort. Another race? That's right. There's a spaceship out there, all right. But it's not manned by human beings. It had been contemplated and speculated upon. Mathematically, it was almost a certainty that such a race existed. But in 18,000 Earth years, no human spaceship had ever encountered them. Now the situation was precipitated. And somewhere outside the Earth vessel, there was an alien race. Of what shape? Of what quality? Of what psychology? It's moving, sir. Heading right for us. At that speed, we'll be in touch in ten minutes. Heading right for us, huh? Just what we'd do if a strange ship appeared in our hunting grounds. Friendly? Well, maybe. We'll try to contact them. We have to do that. But friendly. Thank the Lord for the blasters. 
They may not be hostile, sir. They may be. That's what I'm paid for. Put on this job for to worry about the troubles that may never happen. To all hands, now hear this. A ship is approaching manned by an alien race. I'll give the signal for attack or defense if it be necessary. There'll be no move made unless I give the order. I do not wish to provoke trouble. Stand by. Their ship is slowing down, sir. It's stopped. Weapons department, report. Weapons department, report. Alien ship remarked. Target fixed. Weapons alert. Communications department, report. Communications department, report. We're receiving a modulated short wave, sir. Frequency modulated. Apparently a signal. Not enough power to do us any harm. We'll try to make some sense out of it. Report any progress to me immediately. One thing in their favor, sir. They didn't attack immediately without question. They're trying to establish contact. That seems to indicate they're reasonable. We'll see, we'll see. What are they doing now? Can you make out the locator screen? Bring that power up. Yeah, they're doing something now, sir. There's a section of the hull opening. Probably an airlock, sir. If they breathe air. Yeah, they're letting something out. It's round. A bomb, sir? Unknown object released from alien ship. Observed by weapons department and targeted. Stand by. See what they're doing, sir? They've left the object out there right where they were. And now they're withdrawing the ship. There's no reason why that object couldn't be a bomb, Mr. Dort. Intended to let us think precisely as you're thinking right now. I just have a hunch, sir. I think they're friendly. I think whatever it is out there is a means of communication. You're probably right, but I won't gamble the ship on the probability. Sir, I'd like to volunteer to go out there and look that thing over. Well, you understand whoever does examine it is expendable. Yes, sir. Requisition a lifeboat. If it's all right with you, sir, I'd prefer just a suit with the drive in it. It's smaller and the arms and legs won't make me look like a bomb. And I'll carry a scanner, sir. You may leave when you're ready. Thank you, sir. I'm all ready. Clear the lock and let me out. Weapons department reporting to the captain. Mr. Dort located. Mr. Dort is targeted. Stand by. And that object out there is a device to capture one of our people for observation and questioning. It'll be blown out of existence, including Mr. Dort. Stand by. Mr. Dort. Mr. Dort. Report. Object, as you can see on the scanner, sir, is covered with many small horns, like the detonating horns of the obsolete mines formerly used in naval warfare. Is that their purpose? Do you assume, Mr. Dort? I'm going to find out, sir. I'm going to grab one. Mr. Dort? I'm here, sir. I don't think this is a mine. Circle it so we can see it completely through your scanner. Deadlock, sir. Nothing to report that the scanner hasn't shown you. Oh, wait a minute, sir. A section of the outer hull seems to be opening. Do you see it? Very good, Dart. Hold that. I'm sure it's a communications device, sir. Uh, it looks like it. Fix your scanner so it'll focus on that communications device. Return to the ship. Communications department. Communications department. Progress report, please. We've established communication, sir. Is there a psychologist on the team down there with you? Yes, sir. Mr. Burns is working with us. Will both of you please report to the bridge at once? Oh, you look tired, Dort. We've established fairly satisfactory communication, sir. They seem to have highly developed thought patterns. We got a satisfactory translation from the machine on the fourth attempt. We can say almost anything we want to say to each other now. Of course, how much of what they tell us is the truth, we have no way of knowing. Mr. Burns, you're the psychologist. What do you think? Well, I don't know, sir. They seem to be completely direct. They haven't let slip even a hint of the tenseness we know exists. They act as if they were setting up a means of communication for friendly conversation, but, well, there's an overtone that... Yeah. Well, Mr. Burns, I have a decision to make. On the one hand, opening contact with the friendly people of a vastly different culture could only be beneficial to us of Earth. On the other hand, if they're hostile, I ought to blast them out of existence without any other preliminaries. Oh, but, sir, you can't... I'm not talking to you, Dort. It's not warranted yet, sir. Yes. Now, hear this, all departments. Hear this, all departments. This ship is on an extended alert. 
Provisions will be made so that personnel can have maximum rest and nourishment. Communication continued by means of the artificial language set up arbitrarily between the Earthman and the aliens, decoded by the mechanical decoders. Dort disobeyed orders. He lived on powerful stimulants so that he could stay with the communications machine. Talking, talking, talking to the aliens. Other people, other people, are we being received? We are. Are receiving your message. The chief of this ship wishes to speak with the chief of your ship. The message is heard by the chief of this ship. The chief of this ship communicates that he will hear the message of the chief of that ship. Go ahead, sir. People of the other ship, I'd like to say the appropriate things about this first contact of two dissimilar civilized races and of my hopes that a friendly intercourse between the two peoples will result. People of that ship, what you say is all very well, but is there any way for us to let each other go home alive? That's all, sir. They've stopped sending. Very direct people. Very direct. But, sir, I don't follow. I didn't know what that meant. You know, is there any way for us to let each other go home alive? It means what it says, Dort. Sir, what's to stop us from just cutting communication and leaving, and they can do likewise? What's to stop us? Simply that whichever ship leaves first will be followed by the other. If they find Earth and get back to their own planet, and we don't know where that planet is, Earth will be completely at their mercy. If they leave first, we'll follow them. We'll attempt to find their home planet. Dort, could you swear to any decision that the policymakers on Earth will come to? Sir, even if they do follow us, the closer we get to home, the more of our ships and weapons they'll face. They'd never get away. Well, how do you know that they can't communicate with their home planet without returning? We can't, sir. How do you know they can't? They don't, sir. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation. We'll sit out here, facing each other, trying to outguess each other, until time wears us out, and we'll have to face the fact. Either they destroy us or we destroy them. Navigation officer, attention. Navigation officer, attention. Every star map on this ship is to be prepared for instant destruction. The chief of this ship wishes to know whether the chief of that ship can suggest an answer to the problem concerning us both. Do you want me to answer that, sir? I'll answer it myself. Tell me when to talk. Now, sir. I am giving that matter personal attention. Every effort will be bent to the solution of this problem. Will you consider a temporary truce in the meantime? What would a truce gain? Could we trust you? Would you trust us? I suggest that we continue as we have up to this particle of time. I agree. Sign off, George. Weeks went by, and during the weeks, the exchange of information continued without let-up. What particle of time are the people on that ship at? The resting time. All rest except myself and others on alert duty. Same on this ship. You people of that ship are very similar in many ways. Do you have a family? I have a mate. I have a mate and three offspring. It is too bad for them, as well as us, to have to kill each other. This ship can't see any way out of it. Can that ship? If we could believe each ship, yes. Our chief would like it. But we can't believe you, and you are afraid that we do not tell the truth, although we do. This ship would trail you home if this ship were able to. That ship would do the same. But this ship feels sorry about it. I believe you're a friend. I share your belief and like you. But there is a possibility that you were put to make a trap for me. I will stop now and think it over. (laughs) 
sit down, Dort. Control yourself. We're all under tension. Doesn't do any good to pace like some caged animal. Yes, sir. All right, now I've read the complete transcription of your conversations with this one alien. What does it prove, Dort? Sir, these people are so much like us in their thinking. Well, sir, they're likable. They're likable and they breathe oxygen. Their air is 28% oxygen instead of 20. But they could do very well on Earth. It would be a highly desirable conquest for them. Dort, I'm as set against violence as you are. I don't see any way out of this. And I think we've got to break this status quo. So if in 70 hours we don't see any other way, then I have no further choice. I'll blow them to bits. Will that ship receive communications? Will that ship receive communications? This ship is listening. It seems to me better to communicate than to sit by the machine silently. I would have called you, but you signed off before. The problem goes around and around. I find no answer. Perhaps we could turn our thoughts to other things. The psychologist of this ship tells us that you people on that ship have a threshold of tolerance to tension. He tells us that you will be forced to take one action or another in a period of less than a hundred time particles. I have no communication on this matter. The ship is not trying to extract unwilling information from that ship. A truth is mentioned in passing. A report of this conversation will be carried to the chief of this ship. It would be so. We are prepared. If only the people of this ship could meet in direct contact with the people of that ship, it might be better. We could not communicate then. The communications machine is too large to carry from place to place. And direct contact, the peoples of the two ships would be further apart than now. That's true. I am sad. Much that is pleasant has passed between us. I am sad, too. We are not yet ready for each other. We are not yet ready for each other. It's hard, isn't it, Doc? <laughs> well, Captain, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were here, sir. I've been here for quite a while. Eavesdropping, I'm afraid. It's all right, sir. Nothing can be personal in a situation like this. Yeah, that's right. How long is a hundred time particles, Dort? Pardon, sir? That reference he made to us not being able to stand tension is interesting. Their psychologists seem to make more out of us than we do out of them, don't they? Yes, sir. They hit the nail right on the head. Yes, they did. I think, Dort, we'll just have to push our timetable up a bit. No further communication with the aliens under any circumstances. That's clear, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sir, if they know so much about our psychology, isn't it possible that remark was intended to make us act more quickly? Probable, Dort. Probable. Well, why would they do that, sir? Why? You tell me why, Dort. Mm, all of a sudden, I have an idea, sir. It's crazy. Yeah, it doesn't matter how crazy. I'll listen to it. Sir, I think these people are playing some kind of a joke on us. Joke? A joke, Dort? Yes, sir. Over and over again, I've noticed what I think is a sense of humor. A highly developed sense of humor. Do you recall when we went to all the trouble to set up a fictitious star map and then they just sent us back a, a mirror image of the same one? I think somehow they're playing a joke on us. Well, maybe you're right. In which case, you've seen practical jokers, Dort. Their jokes aren't always funny. Sometimes they hurt people. All departments, man, instant alert. All departments, man, instant alert. Report instantly. Report instantly. Weapons department alerted. Target, the enemy ship. On target, sir. Stand by. Fire! They're gone, sir. Not a trace of them left. Not a tiny trace. Now we can go home. Communicate.
Communications to Captain. Communications to Captain. Report. Sir, I'm picking up new signals. Same frequency as the original alien signals. That's impossible. That ship was destroyed. I'm receiving signals, sir. Set the machine up. We'll be down there in a minute. Mr. Dort, come with me, please. It's good to be on the way home. Yes, it is good. Do you suppose we'll ever figure out what happened to the other ship? Never. A blinding flash and, and they were gone. I suppose they couldn't figure a way out of the situation. An unstable people. They had no sense of humor to cope with the situation. They exploded themselves out of existence. It seems reasonable. They must have had powerful weapons to destroy themselves so completely. Yes, what a shame. In a way, I grew to like them. This isn't meant for us, sir. I don't know what's happening, but I think we're overhearing a private conversation. Yeah, I understand, Dora. Be quiet, will you? Many things might have come out of a relationship with that people. They were describing a disease they call cancer. I think it is similar to the Fogren syndrome. We might have helped them. They might have helped us, too. Well, too bad. We'll never find them again, I think. The odds of such a chance meeting in the vast space of the whole universe. There are no figures for such odds, are there? Turn it up, Dort. Turn it up louder. That's all there is, sir. The signal stopped there. Sir, I don't know how, but somehow when we fired at them, we didn't destroy them, but we did set up a condition whereby they've become invisible to us and we've become invisible to them. Captain to engineering department. Halt forward motion. Captain, why are we stopping? Listen, Dort, you say they're invisible. They are, but they're not destroyed because we just heard them. They're out there somewhere. Invisible. Well, you heard them, so they're heading for home. We're invisible to them, too, sir. How do you know, Dort? How do you know this whole thing isn't a setup? Well, suppose that's true, Captain. You heard their conversation. They weren't talking like any monstrous people. They seemed decent and warm, just as decent and warm as we are. How do you know this conversation wasn't planted, deliberately set up for us to hear? How do you know that, Dort? Yes, sir, you're right. They may be out there and they may not. They may be telling the truth or they may be trying to trick us. They may be friends or they may be the most deadly enemies. You said they had a sense of humor, Dort. <laughs> what a joke to play. To deliberately set up a situation where we wouldn't know fact from fantasy, truth from lie. Wouldn't that be a joke, Dort? Yeah, but we don't know that they did that, sir. And we don't know that they didn't. We don't know anything. Sir, does that mean we never go home again? I don't know. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. <laughs> You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you First Contact, written by Murray Leimster and adapted for radio by Howard Rodman. Featured in the cast were Wendell Holmes, Bob Hastings, Clark Gordon, William Lally, and Stan Early. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. At Radio Gold, we love classic radio, and we look forward to producing and presenting a great variety of new shows like this one, every week in our efforts to keep this high-quality art form alive. If you like what we do, please like the video, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified whenever a new show drops. Thank you kindly for your support. Radio Gold is a three nines fine radio production. See you next time. Mm -hmm.